morning everybody and welcome to today's tutorial where I'll show you how to make these square pot holders in your hoop. These are done completely in one hooping. Um, they are lined and they've got these flaps at the back. Um, so if you want to put your fingers in and hold it like that, then it works fine for that as well. You can leave this out if you want, but I'll show you as we progress. These pot holders were made um, to go well with the, the gloves that we made already. Um, so we're going to make the uh, companion for this plain one today. As you can see, uh, that one matches with the florals. And in, the, in your square file, you will also find uh, one that will match this one and one that will match this version as well. So let's get started on making these square um, pot holders. What you will need for to make these is, of course, your Inselbright batting. This is an insulated batting uh, that uh, is heat resistant. It's got a mylar between the layers. You will need two pieces of fabric and we're going to make the 8x8 eight eight size um, pot holders. We are going to make the 8x8 eight eight pot holders. So I've cut my fabric 10 by 10 inches, uh, one layer in my pink. I've got a contrast fabric for the lining and then I've got two pieces of fabric that are actually folded in half that's going to be the, the back pieces that you saw these two halves so it's just fabric that's folded in half and everything i've just um, ironed it so there's no creases in there you can go ahead and hoop well, one layer of cutaway stabilizer you can go ahead and hoop one layer of cutaway stabilizer and stitch the first step directly on your stabilizer. This will be your placement line for your batting. After the first step is done at your placement line, you can add your batting on top. I'm just loosely laying it on top and stitching the second step. After the batting is tucked down, you can just take your scissors and trim the extra batting around the edge. You will notice that the batting trims a little bit smaller than your actual uh, glove that is just so that we don't have this extra bulk in the seam allowance as we progress after this step is done we're ready to add our first layer of fabric on top and you can go ahead and stitch the next step After you stitch your quilting, if you use the plain fabric or you want to add a, a picture on top, uh, by all means you can now stitch your picture or if you want to add a name, um, this is what you will stitch next. When you finish stitching your quilt pattern, you can add your little tab, uh, which you can just tape in place. You can add your piping. The pot holder is going to be turned inside out and the opening is on, on your right hand side. So you need to place your, if you are going to do these back opening flaps, it needs to lay vertically. So remember to do not place them like that, otherwise you will have difficulty where the opening is to join everything neatly. On this one, you can actually see I've placed it the wrong way around. Now it's, you can um, just turn it inside everything neatly, but it's a little bit difficult to work with and then just top stitch if you like but i don't think it's going to give you a very neat finish so to curb that problem just place your back flaps um, vertically like i've done um, in this example here and then you can add your back fabric on top with your right side facing down and you can now stitch the final step which will leave an opening on your right hand side we'll be back after that is done so i can show you how to turn it inside out
I've removed it from the hoop and I'm just going to trim the corners a little bit tighter and you can notch out the corners if you like just to make it turn it nice and smooth and we're now ready to turn our pot holder inside out so I'm just going to open the flap you can see there turning the corners that's the furthest from me first pushing the whole pot holder through the hole turning out the corners neatly on these raw edges you're going to just push those flaps inward And you can either stitch right on the edge with your sewing machine, um, that opening closed, or you can just hand stitch it right on the edge if you would like. After you've done that, you can take your flaps and just push them over as well. And that will hide any raw edges you had and your hand stitching that you might have done. And you can now just take it to the iron board and iron it neatly. And your pot holder is all done. If you like, you can top stitch all around just for a neat finish, if you like that option. So first of all, to add my piping, you can start at any corner. I just pulled back my cord a little bit so there's a little bit of a flat tail where the piping is not the, the cord is not through that's just so I can make it hang out now first of all I'm going to spray fiber fast spray all around the edge of my block and then I'm going to start on the bottom and I'm going first going to just pull my cord down and then it, it should just overlap where your edge of your uh, embroidery finished. So your piping is going to be on the inside. Now the more accurate you place your piping, the neater it will end up to be. When you get to your corners, of course it's a very tight corner. If you're just going to try and push it down, you'll see what's happening there. So we need to actually make a few incisions to force that cord to turn perfectly. And you can see it actually goes around your corner perfectly now without the fabric being pulled. And you can go ahead and place until you get to the next corner. And when you come to the end, Again, where the two meet, I will just push this one out of the way. And then you can cut off the extra. And I'm just going to glue it down there. And our piping is in place. You're now at the same time going to add your little piece of ribbon. After you have your uh, piping in place you can go ahead and stitch the next step that will just tack down your piping and your little tab in place.